everyone, it's Sal here. A very warm welcome back to another perfume video. I hope you're doing well. So today I'm going to be sharing with you my most intoxicating, beautiful, seductive fragrances appropriate for the springtime. Although having said that, these could be worn all year round as well. If you are new to my channel, then welcome. If you love everything to do with fragrances, I would absolutely love it if you would stick around and click the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on my future videos. I think as it stands right now, the last time I checked my analytics anyway, only around 30 to 40% of my viewers are subscribed, so please don't forget to click the subscribe button below. It really means an awful lot when you guys do that. So before we jump into today's video, as ever, get yourself comfortable, grab yourself a drink and a snack, comment below your drink of choice. Today I have some wonderful coffee, which I'm going to try and drink before it goes cold, because I don't know about you, but often I'll make a drink and I'll forget to drink it quick enough, and then by the time I go to have a sip, it's ice cold. <laughs> so let me tell you, I have some absolute treats to show you today. These are fantastic fragrances. They are very, very intoxicating. They're very feminine. They're really beautiful in my opinion. And I wanted to feature these ones in particular because I do think that they would be very appropriate for this time of year as well. So we are kind of right in the middle of spring now, moving towards summer, and I do think that these would be fantastic for a spring night. Or to be honest, even a spring day these would probably be appropriate for as well because uh, in springtime sometimes the weather can be really quite mild. So without further ado let's jump into today's video. First up today I want to show this absolute gem. This is Athalia from Parfum de Marly. This fragrance is absolutely mesmerizing. I absolutely adore this fragrance. Something I find really intriguing about this scent is it actually um, there's a lot to it. So when I first reviewed this on my channel, I've done a full dedicated review on Athalia. Um, when I watched that review back, I noticed that I actually had um, missed a lot of things out because at the time I only picked up on certain things about the fragrance and then as time passed and I got to know the scent even better, I realised that there's actually an awful lot more to this fragrance than I first thought. So my first impression of this fragrance in my full review, I basically described it as a very powdery, kind of makeup compact powder-like fragrance um, with some musky aspects to it as well, which it is, it's all of those things, but um, what I underestimated at the time was the power of the amber in here, the animalic qualities that this fragrance has, and also the incense. So this is a really rich, deep, um, seductive, thick, warm and alluring fragrance. It's just beautiful. The amber in here is really quite prominent in my opinion. The incense as well kind of plays peekaboo if I'm being honest, so I think maybe depending on the temperature um, or things like that, the incense can seem more prominent sometimes and then other times I just don't detect it at all because like I say my first impression of this fragrance was very much, um, you know, that it was a powdery cosmetic powder, slightly musky scent, um, and it was beautiful and feminine, things like that, but I didn't really pick up on the incense at that point. Um, so I think it's really interesting about this scent, it's so multi-layered. Um, sometimes you'll notice certain aspects of the scent profile and other times you won't pick up on them. So to me, this is almost my shape-shifting fragrance. Sometimes you'll smell certain aspects of the scent profile and other times you just won't notice them at all and you'll notice some of the other aspects of the notes. So it's really interesting from that point of view. I believe the notes of this uh, fragrance, we have your iris, we have orange blossom, there's some bitter orange in the top notes, I believe. There's the really rich amber note in the base. There's some musk and you have your incense as well. I believe there may even be a tiny touch of vanilla in here. So it's really a beautiful, intriguing and mysterious fragrance. So upon smelling it today, what I really get is that amber, the kind of thick powdery accords going on in here. There's a slight sweetness and I'm getting some of that orange blossom as well. It's truly a beautiful fragrance. 
And I think maybe this is the type of scent which is really sensitive to the time of year. So I think maybe depending on the humidity, the temperatures and things like that, I think it can really be quite changeable, which I find absolutely fascinating. But of course, with all of that being said, this is extremely intoxicating, you guys. This is extremely feminine. This is queen-like in my opinion. On the one hand, this fragrance could be described as quite soft because of those feminine powdery aspects to it and the floral notes that we have going on in here. But then on the other hand, um, it could almost be described as a really bossy scent as well because of the rich, powerful amber notes in there, the incense, the rich quality to it, the thickness as well. This is not a light scent, this is quite substantial. It's um, very strong, it's quite long lasting as well and the sillage is also very good. So I think there's some really, really really interesting contrasts going on in here where it's both soft and feminine but it's also very um, kind of dominating, uh, strong, bossy, things like that. It's just such an interesting fragrance, really beautiful, really really feminine. Um, probably not safe to blind by if I'm being honest. I really wouldn't blind by this just because of how changeable the scent profile can be but it is truly stunning, alluring, um, mysterious, intriguing and seductive. I just absolutely love this perfume and it is incredibly intoxicating of course. So that is the beautiful Parfum de Marley Athalia. Next we have a new addition to my collection which I don't think I've actually mentioned on my channel yet um, and that is Elisab Le Parfum. Now this fragrance you guys is just something else really really strong fragrance quite strong on the patchouli there's a really dominating note of a beautiful jasmine in here a really beautiful stunning jasmine note which i absolutely love i know there's some orange blossom in here as well and um, something which is quite interesting about this fragrance actually is how dry it is and i don't know if it's the patchouli in here giving it an almost slight earthy quality to contribute to that dry feeling maybe slightly woody. Now this is what I would consider to be the definition of an intoxicating fragrance. This is really quite powerful, seductive, feminine, absolutely incredible, you guys. If you enjoy jasmine fragrances and you like quite strong scents and you don't mind a bit of patchouli, I think you should definitely check this one out. It's incredible. Um, now I've not actually had a full day's wear of it yet. Um, I did buy it fairly recently and I've not had the chance to wear it out. Um, but I can imagine that this would have fairly good lasting power. I've heard that it does anyway. Um, I'll make sure to update you if that changes. So once I've had a proper wear of it, I'll make sure to update you in a video um, to confirm if that is the case. But I just, I'm fairly confident that this would have really good lasting power in projection. Because even when I just did one spray of it there, it quickly filled up this whole um, area. It created a really nice scent bubble just with one spray and it's really quite strong. I would also say that if you like Alien, then you're gonna love this because there are some similarities with the Jasmine notes, just with the very intoxicating nature of both of those fragrances, they both share a similar sort of feeling. I believe there's a slight honey note in here as well, which is really quite interesting. I think it just um, adds a tiny touch of sweetness to balance this out. Because overall, I wouldn't really say that this is an overly sweet scent, but maybe the honey in there just adds a little bit of balance. Absolutely stunning. My first impression of this fragrance was that it was actually one of the most um, seductive feminine fragrances I'd ever smelled. So it's truly incredible. I think the bottle is beautiful just stunning to be honest and I think this would be an ideal intoxicating scent for the springtime just because it's very floral it's a very heavily floral scent and I think you know on a mild spring day or night when it's not actually that warm you could easily get away with this fragrance for a date night or even during the day I just think this is a fantastic intoxicating fragrance for the spring I can see this one perhaps being a bit too much for the summer but definitely during the spring and every other time of year I think this would be absolutely fantastic so that is the beautiful alluring um patchouli jasmine bomb Elie Sable Parfum. Next up today we have my beloved Mugler Aura. Now this fragrance is incredible. I've been wearing this one a lot recently. 
oh my goodness, there's nothing else out there like this. I absolutely love it. Medicinal, green, menthol, warm, deep, rich, vanillic and woody. It's incredible, you guys. Please let me know in the comments what you think of this fragrance because I know that there's definitely a divide so you either love it or hate it and I can understand why. I don't think this is a safe blind buy at all. I would be really careful um, when purchasing this fragrance. I would definitely try and test it first or just do your research and really look at the notes because um, I can imagine this really wouldn't be for everybody. There's some rhubarb leaf in here. There's a slight minty quality. There's a really rich, deep vanilla woody base to the scent as well, which I think is just absolutely divine. It's definitely extremely intoxicating in my opinion. Really unique as well. If you want to have an air of mystery about you, um, a certain air of intrigue, then I would definitely go for this fragrance. And chances are you're not gonna smell like anyone else around you because it's just quite an unusual fragrance. And it's also not for everybody, as in not everyone even likes it. So um, so it's not one of those mass pleasing, mass appealing, uh, you know, universally likable kind of fragrances. It's really, it's kind of its own thing. But I think it's just absolutely incredible, definitely very intoxicating. I would imagine the type of person who wears this fragrance is somebody who's very um, they kind of march to the beat of their own drum, they have their own style, they don't really care what anyone else thinks of them because they're happy in their own, like, self. Um, all that matters to them is what they think of their own self. Um, so a very self-assured, confident, uh, maybe even slightly quirky person would wear this fragrance, just in my um, opinion, just, you know, that's the impression I get from the scent and it's absolutely incredible. Definitely very intoxicating, perfect for springtime as well. I've been wearing this one a lot recently and I think it's absolutely magnificent. So that is the beautiful Mugler Aura. Next up today we have the absolutely stunning Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal. Now this is the definition of an intoxicating, feminine, seductive scent, you guys. It is just explosive, it's a honey bomb. I think merely describing this fragrance as a honey scent is doing it a real disservice because it's got much more to it than that. This is actually a very deep, intoxicating, um, seductive fragrance. It's quite multi-layered in my opinion. There's a note of kind of beeswax in there giving it something slightly, I want to say musty, but not in a bad way. It's definitely a very prominent honey scent, but if you imagine a very dark, rich, um, intense honey. Very, very intoxicating. The sillage projection, lasting power and everything like that on this scent is incredible. The only thing about this one actually is um, for some reason, when I spray it on myself, after a while I grow anosmic to it and I think it's just because it's simply so strong that um, after a while I struggle to actually smell it but I think it's just because it's so strong. Um, maybe if I sprayed a bit less and didn't wear it as often I would be able to smell it but it is actually a fragrance that I've gone anosmic to a few times. This is an extremely feminine, um, seductive, unapologetic fragrance that will get you noticed. It's very very loud and very intoxicating indeed. So that is the beautiful Jean-Paul Gaultier Scandal. Next we have this beauty here, Linterdy from Givenchy. This is a stunning tuberose scent. There's some vetiver in here as well. It's a very rich, warm, alluring, feminine, gorgeous fragrance, you guys. There's some pear in the top notes, I believe. So there's a slight fruity opening with an absolutely stunning bubblegummy tuberose note as well. Vetiver giving it a, a depth and kind of balancing out that sweetness as well. It kind of offsets the sweetness, I believe. Really rich, there's some orange blossom in here as well, mingling in with that tuberose. But all around, this is just a stunning, womanly, beautiful fragrance. Definitely very intoxicating, perfect for spring nights, in my opinion, and signature scent worthy, actually. I do think that this is an absolutely stunning signature scent for somebody, very recognisable, quite a welcoming scent as well, just because of that deep, warm kind of quality to it. 
I can easily see this being a fantastic signature scent, um, really good quality, really nice uh, lasting power and things like that. This fragrance to me is very uh, beautiful, also quite mature, it's like leaning more on the mature side I would say, just because it's quite uh, refined, quite sophisticated, rich. Uh, opulence, just absolutely stunning. I absolutely love this one. I think for any tuberose lover out there, definitely try this one. This was an absolutely fantastic recommendation for me from one of my subscribers, I think, because I'd been talking about tuberose a lot and somebody uh, mentioned this fragrance and it's just fantastic. Absolutely beautiful tuberose dominant fragrance. Definitely very feminine, beautiful and intoxicating. So that is Lintrudy from Givenchy. And last up today, but by no means least, we have the stunning La Vie Belle Intensement. Now this is a beautiful fragrance. I've kind of been uh, considering whether to buy a full bottle. I have my little um, four mil miniature which I've been using quite a lot not recently but um but I have actually made my way through this a fair bit it's almost halfway done and I do think that perhaps one day I will uh, go ahead and purchase a full bottle but I'm trying to be a little bit um sensible these days I'm trying not to buy too many perfumes so I'm saying no at the moment just because I'm trying to um, cut back a little bit as I've been buying quite a lot of perfumes but certainly this is on my radar for the future the next time I do a big uh, perfume shop I think this will definitely be one that I might uh, pick up this is very creamy it's slightly fruity with that raspberry notes um, it's vanillic this fragrance is very sweet as you would expect from a lavia bell fragrance it's very creamy smooth it's not quite as bright uh, or sharp as the original this one is definitely smoothened out a fair bit you have your iris in here you have your raspberry notes you have your vanillic notes i believe there might be some benzoin vanilla in here as well it's just all around a really creamy a vanillic raspberry rich floral kind of scent and it's absolutely stunning definitely very intoxicating i would say all of the lavia bells are fairly intoxicating fragrances and this one in particular would just be absolutely beautiful for the springtime i think perfect for a spring day or night to be honest just absolutely perfect versatile as well i think this is a perfect all year round fragrance or for any occasion the only thing i would say about this one actually is not to spray too much because I can imagine this one uh, quickly becoming slightly overpowering just because of how strong it is. It definitely still has that um, kind of uplifting La Vie Belle DNA in there, but it's not as bright, it's not as sharp, like I say, it's smoothened out, it's more uh, well-rounded. I would say this one's actually better blended and um, it's just a stunning fragrance actually. Really beautiful, intoxicating scent for the springtime or all year round. So that is La Vie Belle Intensement. There we have it, my intoxicating fragrances, perfect for the springtime or like I say, all year round. It's just because we are in spring at the moment and I wanted to pick fragrances which would be appropriate for this time of year. Please drop me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of my choices. Let me know of any other perfumes you would recommend because you guys recommend absolutely fantastic fragrances for me. I've bought quite a few based on your recommendations. So I always appreciate hearing uh, some perfume recommendations from you. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button below so you don't miss out on my weekly perfume videos. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!